All right, <clears throat> today has to be better than yesterday. Major struggle bus, wind was crazy, blowing stuff off, breaking stuff. We did get two stringers cut and part of the third. And I brought a solution today, a corded scale saw. Battery powered stuff wasn't cutting it, pun intended. So the goal for today, I'm here by myself, but I wanna get all five stringers up I think it's five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. All five stringers up. We've got our line out here where we believe it's going to hit based off of the math. So that should be correct. And we did a whole lot of thinking and discussing. <sighs> Pretty confident we just need to leave the steps the same way that they are. Just shove them all the way over against the ICF. That's going to put us roughly an inch off of that wall which comes from there i know i explained all that yesterday so we're going to have to do some interesting framing over in here to get the headspace that's needed to get over in here so let's get the rest of these stringers cut let's get these things installed and let's figure out what we're going to do next to point something out here real quick before we cut this last stringer you guys can see i have three here and then one on top of this one to make five this one has a t on it this is the very first one that i cut if you try to use your jig that i made if you guys make one similar to it the square with the two boards squeezing it and uh, making an air uh, a flat surface you can slide up and down you'll never get the exact same tread i don't care how perfect you get it if you use the, your first tread as your template for every single cut you're going to be way more consistent yes when you go to use the saw things are going to look, get a little inconsistent but this is the most consistent way to do it it's what i've been told that's what i found out again i'm not a professional but that's just what i do here by myself I'm gonna cheat I've got me a 2 by 8 cut to the length which is the width of my rafters I am NOT on a joist the joist actually here and here but I'm just gonna throw a couple of nails in this oh you gotta put nails in the ferret gun first man hold that thought I'm gonna put a couple of nails in it to hold it in place Basically what that allows is for me to have a positive stop for my 
rafters, rafters, for my stringers to bump up against and keep them from sliding out. And then I can work the top side a little bit easier. And I'm gonna put a two by 12 on the bottom. So I actually cut this an inch and a half shorter than the rise that we need since I'm putting a two by 12 on the bottom of it. You guys will see that here in just a second. That'll make sure that I have the exact same rise all the way up. As you can see, those measure seven and a shy of a quarter, and that measures five and shy of a half. So that is our inch and a half difference. We're gonna get that bottom piece mounted, and we're gonna try to slide them all up there at the same time and uh, nail them off. Let's see how this goes. Well, there you have it. We have all five stringers in. I remembered from previous comments and learning over performing things to make sure we were an inch and a half off the edge of where this wall is gonna come down and meet that bottom plate. All of this blocking and tackling, if you will, will come off. But this bottom plate stays, that bottom plate stays, Got our inch and a half board on this side as well, so we can just run whatever finish down in there that we want. And this is where the ultimate questioning comes into hand. We have roughly, if I go all the way out to the double joist, we have roughly four foot seven from those steps coming up and being able to get to these steps. And yes, now you guys can see why I call this the stairwell to heaven. It's just a great big wide staircase that takes you up into the very top. We are not 100% certain what the very top is gonna be yet. So if anybody has any comments or good ideas as to what that can be, there's a lot of options here. It does have a toilet flange in it. When I say a toilet flange, it's got a pipe for a toilet flange. So I can put like a half bath up here. I can put a toilet and a sink, like a little bar sink or something. Uh, so just put that in your hat rack and 
process, but uh, not for sure what that is going to be. Ultimately, we know how we're going to finish it. I've got some ideas there. You guys just have to wait and see that. But if this were to continue all the way out, now you guys can start to really see this wall is going to come all the way down beside the steps. Those steps down there, if I was to mimic the exact same thing, dump you out all the way over here in this corner. So I know for a fact I'm going to frame that little bit of subfloor closed right there where it is a header bring it over about 10 inches, which shoves the entire staircase over against the wall. That's not gonna be a problem because we've got a support wall underneath of it and we've got double joists everywhere that we need them. And then the platform will attach to the ICF there and the ICF there. So you'll come up, turn, turn, come up again, but we've got to figure out a landing somewhere, somewhere over in there that gets you over to here. That's the interesting part. That's what took so long and was so frustrating yesterday. So I was thinking about turning the steps so that you can walk up over here, turn on a platform, turn on a platform, and walk up this way. The problem is, I don't know if we've got enough room for that. I really don't. And the hard part is, I guess a person could try to figure it out with math. But I'm afraid a person's gonna have to try to build it to then be able to come up. We've got our platforms drawn on the wall where those would hit. And we know we're pretty confident of our distances. The, the biggest issue is to keep the steps 39 and a half inches the entire way and not shrinking your platforms. Again, everyone keeping in mind, I wanna be able to get things up here and into this top portion without it being a major struggle a mattress i believe you're going to be able to turn up and spin if this were to be a bedroom for example uh, coming up with tables and chairs you can take the legs off of them and stand the top of the table up you can take the chair and you can rotate it around those 90s but if those platforms got smaller it'd be really hard to do so um yeah i really don't know how this is going to tie together to be honest with you guys but i do know i'm going to have a vertical wall here that goes all the way up to the top that's where we now have a wall to tie in our rafters which will come all the way out and all the way over top to create an overhang so if you can imagine a vertical wall here at four feet up four feet so let's let's use the stringers to give you guys a really good visual so basically there's four feet right there on that stringer. So at four feet, that's the top of rafter. And then that rafter will run, basically, and it will not be a two by four, but that rafter will run onto this wall and out to that outside edge. So this entire side will be pitched. And that's where I have the option of framing this out to wherever we know for a fact the steps will not dump us out at this double joist but i'm pretty confident it's going to dump us out about an inch off of this board so i may be able to just turn 90 frame over top of this double joist and come over here and then frame it closed so that we have an access to this top and then just have a shorter roof on this side and this this wall could get again that's going to be pitched from the top to the outside edge. So that would only have to come up so far and then we could attach our rafters to that as well and then close it off. So got some interesting things going on over here in this corner. And realistically, if that would not be shorter than this and it was more centered, that would work out really well. But I can't change the original building in order to make that bump out more centered, I'd have had to come all the way over here and almost darn near square up right in the center of that wall. And that, that just wasn't a good option. So we are going to probably cut some treads for the top of this. I'm not 100% certain what I want to do next, honestly. I could start framing up that wall, but it's going to get really interesting up at the top. Um, and I really don't have a second person here. So it'd be a whole lot of up and down and a whole lot of 
cutting and moving and yeah so i may go ahead and lay out these steps up here on the top side and see where they land i don't know yet i'm scratching my head and just ram rambling on so let's see what we're going to do next and uh, we'll be right back I'm sorry, that was not intentional. The board just got a little crazy. So we're gonna cut the treads for these stringers so we can access the top. And uh, hopefully when I come back, I've got two people here and I can start closing this thing off to find out how that's gonna tie in. So let's cut. That board was heavy. Let's cut some tops. Okay, we got all 10 treads cut. We're gonna install them. We are not gonna screw them down fully. We're gonna go throw one on each side, on each outside, and then one in the middle also. And that'll get them there and usable. But these are gonna be our finished treads long-term. So we're gonna get them dirty, wear them out. Well, I'm gonna use the non-pretty side right now. And we'll pop them back off there later, plane them down get that grain looking really good and nice and put some finishing touches on them. So we're gonna set you guys up here on the top on time-lapse and I'll be coming at you with treads. tread gotta make sure they're at least close to centered even though we're gonna redo it later again I'm just throwing three screws in these so that they're usable and somewhat safe I mean it's not like Right off. Ooh, that's a little too far. Away. It's not like if you uh, trip, there's not a 26 foot drop right over there. You know, I mean, no big deal, right? It'll be closed in before you know it. I am greatly pleased. Don't look up there. Oh my gosh, it's a mess. I am greatly pleased with that stairwell. It is nice and easy of a descent. I think those came out exceptionally well. I'm happy with them. Now, Reese has a basketball game. Reese man's playing basketball now too. So that's all the time I have for today, but I do plan on coming back tomorrow. And hopefully I have a second person and I can start framing this wall in and that wall in, getting out here to a certain point. Or maybe, maybe I just go crazy and we frame up that down there and get those steps brought up to a certain point where we can start framing in that to determine what it is we're gonna do as a connection point. Because now we have our landing. This, this is the only landing we got and this is the distance we have in between. Can I turn this right here and shoot out that way? absolutely so I've got some options I'm just not for sure which option I want to take and the only thing I'm trying to create is headspace we need 84 inches of headspace I don't care if that's pitched headspace 
I don't care if that's vertical headspace, and it may be a blend of both. I'm not for sure yet, but we'll figure that out. It's just a matter of getting to that point. So that's today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And as always, oh, by the way, I forgot to say, on time lapse earlier, if you guys go back in the video, two bald eagles flew along the river right there. I actually pointed my arm and held it there because time lapse only takes a, a clip every once in a while. But if you guys go back in the video, um, when I was cutting treads towards the end of that, I believe, there was one bald eagle that went through and then a second bald eagle that went through. So I knew it was going to be a good day. Any day you can see one bald eagle, it's going to be a great day. And then I got to see two, so it was an amazing day. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, like, comment, subscribe.